What's the deal, my people? You know it is Don Tony Teflon, and I'm back at you another one. And this one is from season three, episode four. Was this not the fastest 45 minutes of your life? I mean, come on, people. We're going to break this thing down. Let's get right into it. In typical From style, we start off right where we left off last episode with the EMS pulling up to the tree. But while they're at the tree, we see normal things that we've seen before as the audience members, and that is the crows. Tabitha tries to come out there and tell them something's wrong. We have to get out of here. But this Acosta cop, you know, I'm not really digging her right now. She eventually pushes back. They get inside the EMS truck, and then they skedaddle right out of there. We go into a picture of what I believe is Victor and Eloise and their little fort tent that they made themselves. Ethan's looking at this picture right now and then the phone rings again. We have the voice that fakes like it's Thomas. I told you that this was not Thomas. This was someone just trying to convey a message to him. They say again that Tabitha is arriving in the ambulance and that she needs the help for them to say it. Ethan wants to help his mom. While Jim is just being Jim, we then go back to Colony House with the aftermath of the crow going inside of the window and messing everything up. Elton is still afloat from this whole situation. We see Marielle trying to give some tests to Fatima who's been taking a liking and body looks much better color in the face all because of those rotten vegetables which leads credence to the theory I made up that the town made the vegetables go bad in order to give her some strength for this baby. We transition to Victor and Sarah and I know a lot of people have given Sarah a lot of flack this whole show the whole time from season one people have been hating on sarah i'm not one of those people who've been hating on her. i've always been team sarah i think this place just makes you do things you normally would not do and some things just happen to be murder in this case but victor tells her he needs her to go into the basement with him so that they can build the fort just like the picture that we've seen ethan earlier looking at with him and eloise so he could remember some secrets Tabitha is in the EMS truck and they are arriving into Frumville. Now she's trying to explain to him exactly what they need to do, that they need to keep going straight. The guy wants to turn around. She's like, no, we have to get to town, but nobody wants to believe her, especially the cop. Again, I don't like this cop. I guess she's doing things that cops do. Now, a lot of people may say that they thought it was a little bit too fast for Tabitha to come back to town, but to me, it was right on time because look at the way they treat what do you think would have happened to if other people she would have told the story she most likely would have got locked up in some type of institution that's the reason why i do believe that they brought her back boyd is on recon with randall and randall opens up to him a little bit saying that you don't know what i've seen and it's worse than death what's going on i think we really need to get some answers about what him julie mariel what they all seen it's about time that they start closing that chapter of this story tell us what they seen and then we can move forward from there in the cabin beyond the woods scene with Kenny, Christy, and Jade, I expected a lot more. This was one of the storylines I did, wasn't feeling this episode. I didn't get what I was looking for. We really didn't get anything. But Kenny saying that he was just trying to hold on to what he had left to fight for and everything that he did have to fight for is gone. So it seems like they're breaking Kenny down and that's probably what the town wants. Victor is with Sarah, they get inside the tent and he starts spilling his beans about the boy in white and she realizes that he has seen the boy in white just like she's seen it and he says this was the only friend he had for such a long time when he was there when he's seen all the bodies that were massacred out there which makes me think this didn't happen all the time. Now, this must have been the first appearance of the monsters also because why would everyone just be dead like that? But since he can't bury all the bodies out there, the boy in white tells him to take stuff that's special from each person and bury those instead. And that's what he goes and he digs up and he starts reminiscing over these things. Now I'm going to put this out there. Although I think Eloise is still alive, Victor believes she's dead, but she is alive and probably out there in the cabins beyond the woods. I think that if anyone is going to be Eloise that's in this show, it would have to be Sarah. I think Sarah looks just like her. I don't think the age matches up, but in the end, if we're dealing with time travel, 
reanimated spirits of any kind. I don't think it's a coincidence that Ethan was looking at the picture of Eloise and Victor, and now all of a sudden we see Sarah and Victor in the exact same moment, in the same exact tent. I do believe that maybe the soul of Eloise could be inside of Sarah. That's what it seems like to me. You let me know in the comments section what you think. Before we keep going, I just want to let you know I just released my first novel. It's a psychological thriller called Darkness Before the Dawn. It's available on Amazon. If you like to read, it would really help me out, help out the channel. If you went out there and got yourself a copy of this book, I would really appreciate it. Thank you for all the love. Thank you for the thumbs up, the comments, the shares, everything that you've done for me to help me get to this journey and fulfill one of my lifetime dreams. Now let's get back into it. Boyd's still doing recon work with Randall on the bus and Randall starts telling them interesting things that these creatures do have patterns. He even mentions one creature that likes to sit on the swing and dangle their legs. The other creature comes up to him on the bus and hums then starts tapping on the window. He says it's like clockwork that they do the exact same routine every night but for some reason they're not doing it right now and that's what draws the red flags. Right after this we see the ambulance pull up into town and everybody sees it. We see Randall and Boyd see it. We then see Ethan sees it. After Ethan sees it, Jim takes a look outside to see if he's lying to him even though the lights are flashing. We see Ethan run out there knowing his mom is in there. Boyd grabs him up, he brings him back outside, and this is the problem what's going on here. There's not a lot of communication as we could see that this town has. They would just talk to each other, even though it's nighttime, I understand that. But if they did talk to each other, a lot of these situations could be avoided about the phone calls and everything else, but it seems like everybody wants to keep a secret. The ambulance pulls up on the girl outside, Tabitha tries to warn him that this is not a regular a person and in all their wisdom this cop Acosta decides I'm going to cuff you inside of this EMT vehicle right inside the ambulance that's why Tabitha had to get out because if they're reacting like this to her what do you think other people would have reacted to so the EMS go over to the girl and as soon as they flip her over and she transforms to the nightmare creature she slashes the one guy's throat she guts the other guy Acosta comes out there she sees all this happening and then Acosta she goes out there and she starts trying to bust shots after she's busting shots, she realizes all of a sudden, oh my God, my gun's not working. And what does she do? She just takes off and runs and leaves everybody behind, which is a, a little bit of a theme about what happens in this episode a little later. But she does. She busts a couple of shots, no effect, and she's out, leaving Tabitha handcuffed inside the ambulance. Tabitha left alone with Victor's father on the ambulance, all of a sudden, they start hearing knocks on the door. She's thinking the monsters are coming in, but nope, it's good old Jimbo there for the rescue. But Jim is shocked to even see Tabitha there, even though he heard on the phone that she was going to be there from the guy who was pretending to be a boy, who I believe is the same voice that we heard on the radio tower. I told you that in the episode I did before that that's the case so after this we see Boyd we see Randall they all come inside there realize Tabitha is alive and also on the ambulance which shocks them both the cop somehow found her way towards Colony House and while this lady is looking out the window watching this police officer just bust shots blindly I mean, after you've hit these things center mass as many times as she has, you have to realize the bullets have no effect. But she doesn't. She shoots another one. It goes through the window, and it hits Shorty right in the stomach. Now, we've seen this part in the trailer already right from the beginning. I thought it was Julie. Obviously, I was wrong on that situation. But we see she's shot. Marielle has to go to attend. And that was one thing that does happen in this scene that they do not explain that I don't understand. I don't know if it's a misstep because after I patch lets the cop in she starts to deny everything and doesn't want to take responsibility but there's a hole in the window i didn't see anybody patch it up do you guys see anyone patch it up because if there's a hole in the window i would think the monsters should be able to get in there but we don't see them get in 
Randall gets confronted by the monsters. He holds up the talisman like it's some type of badge or something. It doesn't work. They tell him specifically that's not the way it works. He then go, gets the toolbox over to Boyd. And this is when we see the monster holding the keys to Boyd and he has a decision to make. You can either save the people in the ambulance or Randall. And they said we're going to keep Randall specifically. So Boyd has to face this decision. I think he makes the right call. It's a hard call, but from everything that we've seen Randall do before, you have to save Tabitha. She has information. She made it out and back. We got to save her. We then see Fatima with Marielle trying to save this lady. They do get the bullet from inside of her. They pull that out. Boyd gets the ambulance all the way back to Colony House to unload everybody inside and they all make a run for the door. Donna gets them inside and is shocked as hell, just like everybody else is, when they see Tabitha come out the door. I mean, the whole place is staring at her. Everyone must know she was gone and now everybody knows she's back and they all must be just wondering, how the hell did she get back? How did she survive this whole time? Because they all must know. And then she got a chance to say to the cop the same thing that I'm going to say to a lot of people. My theories are right. I told you so. When the cop comes and takes off her handcuffs. Elgin then goes out and he's talking until he asks her, am I sleeping? And we don't get an answer for that. I'm going to assume that he wasn't sleeping, but he does ask that question. He gets up and then he follows the kimono lady. And the kimono lady speaks. We hear her say help me so is this a good entity an evil entity entity does she really need help or is she trying to manipulate elgin i guess we'll have to wait to find out you let me know what you think ethan presses julie about what she's seen and i think that after this conversation we can agree that she's going to have to open up about it we heard randall talk about it earlier and now we hear julie talking about it so i do expect us to get a lot more information about what all three of them seen they need to just get together after this we go back to jade and i'm in the cabin again this was the most disappointing part of this episode we really got nothing they didn't give us anything i thought we were going to get something special we got nothing we get a couple of thuds on the uh, outside and that's about it i mean jade does open up and says she was seeing visions and then we hear her say are you sure you they were only visions after they hear the thumping on the door but besides that truly we didn't get a lot i expected a whole lot more maybe something else is going to happen we then go back to victor and he starts pulling these things out of the trunk that belonged to the people that he collected that the boy in white told him to collect from so that he could bury them to help them with their memory again I'm telling you, I believe that Sarah is going to be Eloise in the end. It just seems like it's going to go that route. I'm telling you, I know that the, the, the age don't fit, but the age is not going to matter in this situation. It seems like this is where, where, the way they went ahead. Because after Victor freaks out, he realizes there's nothing in there from Christopher. Sarah cons him down. And then we know now that this puppet's name is Jasper, and he has the secret. We see something we've never seen before, and that is Donna just break down that she can't take what's going on. Why is it happening? Boyd is up there comforting her. I know this may seem that Donna isn't the mole, but I'm not getting away from that. I still believe she is the mole. Victor talks to Sarah about Christopher not being there and how Christopher, he seen with his own eyes, Christopher talking to the puppet and not only talking to the puppet from what he's seen it seemed like the puppet was talking back and that's what it seemed like to me because that puppet was all the way across the room when it was talking to him so we see Fatima convince Ellis that she doesn't want him around that she just wants to go to this girl and talk to her because she was being mean to her but in reality she wanted to lick this lady's blood I mean she stuck both fingers in the hole both fingers in the hole people she stuck up in there no ditty but she did stick both fingers in the hole and started licking her fingers I thought that the blood had some connection to do with Fatima because I told you last episode that I made that the guy drinking out of the baby skull seemed to be a key that had to do with Fatima. I didn't know she was going to be drinking no blood or anything else like that. I thought it was going to be some type of sacrifice. But evidently, I guess blood is what she needs. Is she a vampire? I know those are the theories that are going to start 
coming around we can talk about that later in the live stream after that we see the lights go on and randall still alive laid up on top of the ambulance and now boyd's going to have to face this man that he left to die and and you know this guy's not going to be calm about it he's going to let boyd know like yo motherfucker you left me to die you chose them over me and this could do something to turn people against boyd it could make people not trust in boyd's judgment anymore once they hear the story that boyd left this dude behind but that was the episode overall very good episode very pleased with the episode what do you think let me know your theories in the comment section i left a couple in this video already let me think let me know what you think of those theories i made up and also again my new book psychological thriller darkness before the dawn is available at amazon i'll leave the link down in the comment section and i'll leave the link in the description if you can it would help me out a lot if you go out there and buy this book let's get this book to number one on amazon people i know with your help we could do it and if you like the way i do this please thumbs up this spread this across the realm and of course subscribe and until next time you know who it is peace and stay sexy